Welcome, future orthodontic experts and curious minds. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most critical and fascinating aspects of orthodontic treatment, space closure. If you've ever wondered how orthodontists meticulously move teeth to achieve that perfect smile, this video is for you. Space closure isn't just about straightening teeth. It's a sophisticated process used to correct arch-to-tooth size discrepancies and even address underlying skeletal problems. It's a fundamental step in many orthodontic journeys, and understanding its nuances is key to successful treatment outcomes. So, let's unlock the secrets behind effective space closure and explore the biomechanics that make it all possible. At the heart of space closure lies the concept of anchorage. Think of anchorage as the resistance to unwanted tooth movement. It's about controlling which teeth move and in what direction. There are three primary types of anchorage we need to understand, maximum, minimum, and moderate. First, let's talk about maximum anchorage. This is when we want to retract the anterior teeth, your front teeth with minimal or no forward movement of the posterior or back teeth. Imagine pulling a rope but you want the anchor point to stay almost perfectly still. In orthodontics, this often involves using extraoral support, like headgear or cutting-edge solutions such as microimplants, also known as temporary anchorage devices, or TADs. These devices provide a stable point from which to pull, ensuring that the desired teeth move while others remain in place. The goal here is to close the extraction space primarily by moving the front teeth backward. Next, we have minimum anchorage, this is the opposite scenario. Here, our primary goal is to protract or move forward the posterior teeth with minimal or no backward movement of the anterior teeth. If maximum anchorage was about pulling from a stable point, minimum anchorage is like pushing from a stable point. This is often achieved by moving the premolars and molars one at a time, carefully controlling their forward progression. The extraction space is closed mainly by bringing the back teeth forward, Finally, there's moderate anchorage. As the name suggests, this is a balanced approach. In moderate anchorage, we aim for an equal amount of retraction of the anterior teeth and protraction of the posterior teeth. It's a give and take, where both segments contribute to closing the space. This approach is often used when a balanced movement is desired for overall arch coordination. Understanding these three types of anchorage is fundamental because the choice of anchorage dictates the entire biomechanical strategy and the appliances used. It's all about precise control to achieve the desired outcome without unintended side effects. Biomechanical Strategies Frictional Mechanics Now that we understand anchorage, let's delve into the biomechanical strategies used to close these spaces. We primarily categorize these into two main approaches, frictional and frictionless mechanics. First, let's explore frictional mechanics. As the name implies, this method involves friction between the orthodontic bracket, the ligature, and the arch wire. While friction can be a challenge, it's also a factor that orthodontists learn to manage. A significant part of the force applied to move teeth can be lost due to this friction, making anchorage control even more critical. In frictional mechanics, space closure has traditionally been performed in two stages. The first stage often involves canine distalization, where the canine teeth are moved backward along the arch wire. This is particularly necessary in cases with anterior crowding. The canines slide on the arch wire, and the movement is achieved through a series of slight tipping and uprighting cycles. Factors like the force applied, the angle between the wire and bracket, and the wire's material all influence this movement. For efficient canine retraction, a stiff, round wire with a wire ligature and light force is often the optimal combination. Once the canines are distalized, the second stage, incisor retraction, begins. This involves moving the front incisor teeth backward to close any remaining spaces. Incisor retraction in sliding mechanics requires stronger anchorage compared to canine distalization. Historically, this was a challenging procedure, but with advancements like microimplant anchorage mechanics, on mass retraction moving all anterior teeth simultaneously has become much more efficient and predictable. Microimplants provide a stable, non compliant anchorage point, allowing for more controlled and effective tooth movement, even in challenging cases. Biomechanical Strategies Frictionless Mechanics 
Moving on to frictionless mechanics, this approach minimizes or eliminates friction by using specialized wire configurations, such as closing loops or segmented arch techniques. This allows for more precise control over tooth movement and force application. One common method is the continuous arch wire technique, which involves a closing loop bent into the main arch wire. The design of this loop is critical. As its spring characteristics influenced by the arch wire size, loop configuration, and distance between attachment points. Determine its effectiveness. By incorporating more wire into the loop, using smaller wires, or increasing the interbracket distance, orthodontists can enhance the loop's working range and control the moment to force, or MIGF, ratio. This ratio is crucial because it dictates how the tooth will move, whether it will tip, translate, or rotate. For instance, Specific gable bends placed in the loop's legs can generate root paralleling moments, ensuring that teeth move with their roots in the correct position after space closure. The other significant frictionless approach is segmented arch mechanics. In this technique, the anterior and posterior segments of the dental arch are treated as two large teeth that move around their respective centers of rotation. This is often achieved using rectangular wires and a transpalatal arch. Space closure is performed with specialized wires like the TMAT loop, inserted into molar tubes and crimpable vertical tubes. The beauty of segmented arch mechanics lies in its ability to precisely control moments and forces, allowing for differential anchorage. For example, in maximum anchorage cases, the T loop can be positioned to create a higher moment on the posterior segment, resisting forward movement, while the anterior segment is retracted with controlled tipping. This method offers effective anterior retraction, especially when combined with auxiliaries like headgear or class II elastics for additional anchorage support. Both frictional and frictionless mechanics have their unique advantages and applications, and the choice between them depends on the specific needs of the patient and the desired tooth movements. Orthodontists carefully select the most appropriate strategy to achieve optimal results. Key takeaways and clinical considerations. So, what are the key takeaways from our deep dive into orthodontic space closure? Firstly, the decision to extract teeth and how to close the resulting space is highly individualized. Based on factors like the severity of crowding, vertical growth pattern, midline discrepancies, and the incisor-lip relationship, there's no one-size-fits-all solution. Secondly, understanding and managing anchorage is paramount. Whether it's maximum, minimum, or moderate, the chosen anchorage strategy dictates the biomechanics and the appliances used. Patient cooperation, especially with extoral appliances like headgear, can significantly impact the success of maximum anchorage cases. Thirdly, both frictional and frictionless mechanics offer distinct advantages. Frictional mechanics, while dealing with inherent resistance, have evolved with the advent of microimplants, making end mass retraction more efficient. Frictionless mechanics, with their precise control over forces and moments through loops and segmented arches, allow for highly controlled tooth movement and differential anchorage. Finally, it's crucial to consider clinical implications and potential side effects. For instance, large moments in maximum anchorage cases can lead to significant vertical forces, potentially impacting facial dimensions, especially in high-angle patients. Similarly, in minimum anchorage cases, Careful management is needed to avoid unwanted incisor extrusion or retrusion. Regular monitoring and adjustments are essential to ensure the desired outcomes and prevent complications. Space closure is a testament to the intricate science and art of orthodontics. By mastering these biomechanical principles, orthodontists can achieve stable, functional, and aesthetically pleasing results for their patients. We hope this guide has shed some light on this complex yet fascinating topic. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more insights into the world of orthodontics.